Welcome to Sounds of the Dolphin Star Temple, home of Pleiadian Lightwork. My name is Inge van Stralen and I'm happy to be your host for this episode of Sounds of the Dolphin Star Temple. I am a Pleiadian Lightworker and I'm very passionate about Pleiadian Lightwork. I truly believe in its power to contribute to the shift in human consciousness on this planet. So over the next few months, I'll be doing a series of interviews with Pleiadian lightworkers around the world, and I will explore with them what it is in Pleiadian lightwork that can help bring the shift about. For this episode of Sounds of the Dolphin Star Temple, I interviewed Mish Morski. Mish is a Pleiadian light worker who lives and works in Australia. She is also a member of the board of the Dolphin Star Temple Mystery School. I spoke to Mish about Pleiadian light work and the impact it had on her life and what it could do for the world. And in this conversation that I had with her, she described her life purpose to me as working with all her heart with beautiful human beings who are wanting to shift where they are in life and to change their emotional and physical state. Isn't that just beautiful? What a beautiful purpose. So I'm really excited to share this wonderful conversation with you. Here is Mish. Hi, Inga. <laughs> So happy to have you here and to be talking to you about Pleiadian light work. So, but before we get into all of that, maybe you would like to start by, you know, introducing yourself and tell us a little yeah. more about you. Sure. Thanks, Inga. And it's great to be here too. It's just wonderful to uh, connect with you and have this, this talk today. Um, I'm a mother of two kids. I have like a 13-year-old and a 15-year-old, one boy on the Asperger's range. So I'm a full-time mum and I also work full-time in Palladian Lightwork. I have a small studio set up here in Victoria and Melbourne in Australia and I work from there, but I work with everybody from all over the world. So I'm running kids about during the morning and Palladian Lightwork all day and then running kids about at the end of the day doing your, you know, your everyday kind of stuff wow. I've been a long a long journey like um my experience Inga is quite wide and varied um like with before I came to Palladian Lightwork I was working in the rock climbing industry and doing all sorts of different crazy things oh, wow. uh, before I came across so yeah so my experience has been very interesting oh. and, and do you find that it helps with being a light worker yeah, absolutely. Like um, a lot of my life I've worked in service to people. So I worked with youth at risk and high suicide, mental health and um, mental illness as well. I used to take people away for respite. Um, I've, I've worked with, a lot with street kids as well. And um, yeah, I've also done my counselling diploma too. So I've done, which I didn't originally do to do any counseling I actually did it for myself <laughs> just to actually learn more about me so when I came across Palladian light work it was oh, it was just so magnificent like to have something that was like a tenfold going to a counseling session it was like having 10 sessions in one well probably that's probably an over exaggeration but it just depends on how you know like with counseling you really have to build a lot of rapport with your client before you can actually um, sit and open up and get to the deeper areas of where things are. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Palladian light work, it's a direct connection with the inception point of where issues start from or where they've originated. And so through that connection, you can get straight away to those belief systems. Whereas I've done plenty of counselling in my life and it's taken me quite a lot of sessions to even understand why and where that came from. And as a counsellor, you, you ask questions to research and find and you build rapport. So mm -hmm. I found like with Palladian Lightwork, it was really fast tracking in comparison to like what I'd experienced with many different counsellors before in my life. Okay, so how do you think that works? 
why is Pleiadian light work so fast and gets you to like the inception point almost? Yeah, it's a really good question. So to have the ability, I mean, we're, we're so connected as human beings, like we're all connected and yes. we have the ability to feel into each other and work with each other and help each other. And with Palladian light work in learning how to um, really sit with yourself and become 100% responsible for your own life, you, and when you surrender to that and you can really sit with that, it allows you the ability to go in and see where, like whether you're working with a client in Palladian Lightwork as a, as a worker or whether you're receiving mm -hmm. um, one from yourself or from, from someone else. Um, it really allows the pinpoint of those issues to, to arise. So, for example, um, I, I had a great one where at six years of age, I, I had this awareness at six years of age when we moved house and you know, so many things in my life were changing and my friends were changing. And I noticed that like through, through having a session in Palladian Lightwork, they were able to pinpoint at six years of age what happened. And I realised that I had, a, I, I had a belief start to form that I had to change who I was in order to receive acceptance and love from others. Oh. And, you know, it, at six years of age, like that's quite a long time ago. So that would have taken me quite a long time to find that. But in Palladian Lightwork, I was like oh my goodness, like I really started to understand that, oh, to, to have acceptance and love, I'll need to do this for these people and I'll have to do this for my family and I'll have to do this for my friends to receive that acceptance and love. Yeah. And so as soon as I could pinpoint where that was, I could look at those belief systems and see if they were actually right for me, which they weren't. And through changing them, through yeah. the processes of um, light work, it was just incredible, like the change that came with that very quickly. Like the integration was slow back in the 2000s and our ability, like as an earth, is just so much more faster. We're processing incredibly. Like my daughter knows what I know now um, already at her age and I know what my mother knows already at her age. Yeah. So it's quite quite a fast, like we're all, you know, we're coming together and we're speeding up very quickly to be able to move through our stuff a lot faster, Yeah, which is really wonderful. So if I was in counselling and doing that, that would have taken quite a long time for me to realise that that was a turning yeah. point in my life. Yeah. Whereas through light work, you can, you can just go in and, and pinpoint and feel into that person and mm. um, just be shown what actually is there and what's going on or what's arising, what belief systems are have been created by that young girl at that time. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it sounds yeah. like Pleiadian light work has had quite an impact on your life. Would you care to yeah. share us, to share some? Yeah. Well, originally when I first, um, I was a rock climbing instructor and I was working in mental health and I had a, a really unfortunate bad car accident. So I went from climbing seven hour cliffs in one day and, working with people with mental health to being laid up in bed going, oh my goodness, like my whole life is stopping. And my mind was very fast. And as I had the inability to use my body, my mind started to spiral extremely fast. And I went downhill very quickly over a year. I became um, quite suicidal. Like I was having thoughts of, you know, how am I going to die? Like what way will I die? And how will I do that? And all oh, that might hurt. Maybe I'll do this or oh, that might not work. So when, when you have suicidal thoughts, like it's quite a heavy place to be, but it's also, it's also normal to even think like that. You don't think that that's really an extreme way to think. It's not something that you go, Oh, this is really bad that I'm having this. It's just, you're just contemplating what way it's going to happen. And so, um, it was really bizarre. My mum had just been amazing and she'd been great. And I rang her and I found some ad in the paper for Reiki, which I, I thought, oh, that's a spiritual thing. And I'm not really spiritual, but I would love to shout her this course because she's like really trying to help me out here. So I rang her and I said, oh, I've got something for you. She said, oh, I've got something for you. So she called me and um, I came over and we both pulled out the same ad. And I went, oh, that's really bizarre. She said, She's going, you have to do it. You have to do it with me. I'm thinking, oh, no, not into this spirituality. And she said, no, come, come. It'll be fun. So 
I went and the lady taking the Reiki course was a Palladian light worker. And so my mum had booked me in for a session with her, which I thought, no, oh, I just don't want to go. I don't want to go. But I sat down and I had this session with this woman and it was incredible. Like the first thing she said to me was, oh, you, you want to leave the earth. And I knew in that moment, like there is just no way that anybody knows that. I hadn't, I hadn't spoken my truth with anybody around that. And I was so fascinated that she could even know that about me, that it really blew me away. And then and from that point, we went through the session and she was clearing and said, well, do you want to anchor back into your body? And I was like, well, if it's that easy to do, yeah. <laughs> she said, it might take a few sessions, but, you know, like we can, we can, you know, it's up to you. Like it's, it's your choice. And I thought, wow, that's like nobody's given me that choice before. And yeah, so I had that session and over, like we worked on a lot of things in that session, which just blew my mind. Like mm -hmm. I was really amazed with what she was saying and things that really connected with me straight away that I thought nobody else could know that. And when I left this, like over the next three months, I had a complete shift. Like my world went from in a hole, like being uncomfortable with being in the hole of, you know, depression and sadness to coming out of the hole and actually seeing life again. So it was, it was really incredible. And I thought, this is amazing. Like, and she said to me, you may want to come back for another session. <laughs> and so she had put me on to a beautiful woman here in Australia, Rhonda, and said, I think, you know, you might enjoy seeing her. So I, I then, because I was so blown away, I actually went and had healings with her for the rest of the year. And, you know, I probably did one a month um, at the time. And I was scraping together money to go, I've got to do this. I just have to do this. And, you know, I was absolutely blown away how specific and spot on those readings were every single time and through that my self-worth started to come back my self-love started to come back in I started um, really taking responsibility for where I was and I was so excited and Rhonda had uh, this is back in the year 2000 and um, Rhonda I said to her like you have to you have to teach me this stuff. I had, I, I then got the book and I started reading and I remember sitting there in the first session that I actually, while she had her eyes closed, I put my hand between her face and her hand <laughs> and I, like she didn't know. And I was going, how do you know this? Like how? And she said, well, we're all connected oh. and it's just learning to be with oneself and learning to realign with who you really are to be able to, tune in to yeah. what I can feel. And if you're open to me feeling that, I can then see and feel. So, yeah, so then she actually said, well, come down and meet Amora. She's coming to Australia. So I thought, okay. fantastic. Just let me interrupt you yeah. for one second. You were talking about you, you got the book. Is that the book from Amora? Yeah, so the Palladian Light Workbook, um, Opening Your Divine Car. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, she put me onto that book about halfway through the year. It was absolutely magnificent um i started reading about things and i was still unsure like i was doing some of the the things in the book and then i thought oh, i'll just i'll just buy the cds or back then they were actually tapes i'll buy the tapes so i can lay down at night and do them and they were amazing like it was amazing like the book holds such great processes for when you're first starting out and you don't know and you're learning to hold your energy Yep. So um, that is a really wonderful tool for anybody who's looking at Palladian Lightwork is to get the book and, you know, go ahead and get the CDs or the MP3s. It really helps to have her voice and bring her in okay. while you're um, reading the book as well. So that, that was really good. And so as that continued, I thought, I've got to get this book signed. So when Amora <laughs> came down, I met her first in uh, Melbourne and, yeah, I was just blown away by this woman like the amount of things that she has brought through to this earth and the gifts that she's brought for us as human beings to be able to make our life so much easier mm. and hold so much more love within ourselves um so it was yeah it was really incredible yeah wow so you got yeah. actually got to work with amora well, yeah, she, well, she actually held a meditation, but um, later on, like I talked the Rhonda into teaching me and she said, 
oh, I'm just about to start teaching, but I'm not ready. And I said, you're ready because I'm your student. <laughs> she said, okay. <laughs> and um, she said, well, I really, I want to go on to this trip for Uluru. And I said, well, if, if I'm your student, we can go to Uluru together. So we did a trip with Omar Kayuel and, um, which is Peter and Amora in Uluru, which was just incredible. So we spent, um, I think it was two weeks, or oh, maybe about eight or nine days in Uluru, um, which is the, the base chakra of the earth. And mm. we did a lot of meditations. I had some profound experiences in Uluru. It's an incredible sight. Mm. Um, so that was really beautiful. So I did get to work with her and she was amazing. Like, what that woman can bring down and her knowledge and the way she channels is just, mm. I was even more taken when I met her and I thought, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. That's amazing. This is what yeah. I want to do. So is this your yeah. life purpose? Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So there's two things that, that really, like I'd done a lot of study and counseling and lots of other things um, that I was trying to do to heal myself and when I came across this work, I thought I, I was so taken by the shift and change that I had been through. Even my parents were so taken. My mother even did the course as well. And she is not that spiritual. So that was, you know, for the, for the change that I went through was incredible. So I thought, yeah, I, I want to learn this. But first and foremost, so I can continue to heal myself. Mm. So with Palladian Lightwork, um, you know, and this is great for all light workers out there. Like, you know, just the other week I, I came across that I was really agreeable and I thought, oh, I'll just pop in and do a session on myself about that. I was fascinating the things that came up. And so first and foremost, the healing and dedication to my own evolution and self growth is really important. Um, especially if I want to keep working with others. And so I love, absolutely love with all my heart to work with, um, beautiful human beings who are wanting to shift where they are and to change their life or change their emotional state or their physical state. You know, it can be many, many different things, whether it's spirituality, physical, um, mental, emotional, like there's so many aspects that it really is incredible. So yeah, so that I knew straight away, this is definitely my purpose and this is what yeah. I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life because I love it. I, I've, I've heard you say like taking responsibility in connection to Pleiadian light work. Do you think that's important? Absolutely. Like before I was, uh, before I learned any Pleiadian light work and when I was just doing the healings, I didn't realize that um, like I have so much, like so much control over how my life goes. I, I would blame others. I would, you know, I would just put it on them and, and not necessarily verbally. I wouldn't speak my truth about things, but I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's your stuff. And, oh, yeah, but really some of it was my stuff. And I didn't look at what really, how, how was I a co-component in all of this creation? And I didn't look at how I was affecting others or how, you know, I was affecting myself. Like that was probably the biggest, was learning like my thought forms were creating my feelings and in in my immediate experiences i learned that you know there's so much more to me than just than just where i am right now like mm. there's been this whole build up of life to to get me to where my belief systems are and and my connections with people i had very narcissistic relationships i had really unhealthy connections with people um, I couldn't say no to people. I was a very yes, yes, yes person. I'll do anything for you. I could never go to somebody's house without giving them a gift of some sort. Like I had some big stuff going on, you know, for, for trying to receive love and acceptance from others. Um, so, yeah, when I learned the responsibility of myself, first and foremost, and to be able to go in and do a session on yourself is amazing. Like it gives you so much self-love because you're owning it and mm -hmm. you're changing it and you're doing it like you are doing it. Mm -hmm. And to that, to me, that is one of the best self-love gifts I can give to myself. Yeah. It's really incredible. We were talking a little about things going so much faster or, you know, they're like, you already know what your mom 
knows now and your daughter already knows what you know now. So, yeah. you know, obviously this is like a special time in, in the Earth's existence yeah. and, you know, we're in this special shift. How do you see Pleiadian light work contributing to that? Oh, wow. That's a really great question. No, it is such a good question because it does have such an impact on everything. Yeah. So as, as I work on myself, because, well, I'll just, I'll just reverse back. Like when I first started in Palladian Lightwork, when I was yeah. training in the courses, which are absolutely amazing, I have to say, like really phenomenal to, like it really makes you, you have to really believe in yourself. And the, all the teachers that I know are just incredible they're really incredible at holding the space. And so back in the 2000s, it took us a long time to actually uh, process our stuff. It would take months and months to process things. And as like we've gone, you know, 18 years, 19 years since then, like now we, are, we have the ability to process very quickly. And so when I'm sitting here and I'm holding space um, for myself, I'm sending out and I'm, and I'm working on myself and I'm, I'm healing myself and I'm raising my vibration. And just say the girl down the road is raising her vibration and the guy who's like maybe 200 Ks away is raising his vibration through doing his self-work. We're holding like a, I'm going to go into a little bit of quantum physics here because it's really interesting. Um, and I've had many chats with many beings about how this works because I've been very curious myself so my understanding now is that when we hold that, that space for ourselves, when we raise that vibration, so when we're feeling more in acceptance and love of ourselves, we put out a vibration, a field of energy that reaches out um, beyond where we are. And we're... I think I lost you there for a bit. Ah, oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, well, that's probably because I'm in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty laid back here. <laughs> We're on the other side of the world. <laughs> yeah. So I was just talking about that field of energy yeah. that when I'm working on my stuff, it changes a vibration within myself and that field then starts to exist outside of myself. And what I noticed that impacts me a lot is as my vibration raise, rises, I start to come across more people who are more uplifted and they start to enter my life. I start to uplift more people. And so other people now are getting affected and I'm drawing to me um, more people on the same level of vibration that I am. And this is so exciting, you know, to like have that happen, you know. And, and so often, you know, people will say even when they come for a healing, like, wow, I actually held my energy for like two days after our healing this time. And I'm like, yes, how does that feel? And they're like, feels really good. And I'm, I'm aware that it's sort of come back down a little bit, but I know that now I can still get up there with, with a little bit of work. And it's not hard work. It's just being present and wanting to work on those things. And so I think because we're like, if you look at the children that are coming onto our earth at the moment, they're just incredibly sensitive. The awareness is incredible and their justice for the planet is really huge. Mm. And so they're already coming in with this vibrational wave around their bodies and they're not tolerating the lower vibrations that are, that are coming through. So they're finding them quite harsh mm -hmm. and hard to deal with. So I think as us as um, our older generations in our communities, and our younger generations coming up, the more of us that can hold these places on earth or hold vibrational energy, the more people we're affecting in that zone. So Amora would have spoken about, and you, you'll read this in the book, she talks about the 144,000 um, <clears> on Christ, which she was talking about the 144,000 people that can hold that vibration on earth will impact all the other people around the earth. I mean, that's, that's a really incredible thing. So I might affect 144,000 people around me. I mean, that inspires me greatly to hold that energy so I can affect more people. And here's, here's a really, really funny little story if we have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll make time. <laughs> so when I first moved here and I was um, setting up space on the property and 
I had this feeling that something was going to happen in the street. So I, I thought, oh, I'll set up space and I'll just get everything happening. And it was feeling all good. And I, I went to bed. I had an amazing sleep. And I woke up the next morning to all the wheelie bins, you know, that you put your rubbish in. Um, I, they were all lined up down the street. And every single letterbox had been ripped off its hinges. So some kids had come through, like just teenage boys, being teenage boys, thinking, oh, let's have some fun. And they did this to the whole street, except for my house. <laughs> so I had my letterbox still intact. My bins were just sitting there. They could have easily wheeled them out. They just didn't even take them. And when I thought about that afterwards, I thought, I just know that because of my intention setting, and my intentions are really strong, and when you practice intention and it gets stronger and stronger, like anything starts to solidify in its, the energy of itself, um, I thought, yeah, it's because I've had this temple set up around me. So I thought, right, next time I'll involve the whole street and I'll just temple the whole lot. <laughs> but it was, it was a funny little thing because all the neighbours were going, why isn't yours touched? I said, I just, well... I could explain it. <laughs> I thought I was just setting up my staff, you know. <laughs> was, Do you actually laugh. explain it to other people? Yeah, I do. I, I used to worry when I was first in it because it was pretty out there for early years in the 90s and the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, but now I do. But I often, um, because of my ability to feel into people very quickly, I can often talk in their language. And so if I need to take it more into their language, I'm, I'm very good at, um, yeah, tuning into how they, they can hear and how they can uh, communicate with me or they're, like everybody is on a different level of evolution. And sometimes I think when, we, when things are explained to people, it could be just not in that you're just not crossing the right frequency of communication. And so when you get really good at um, tuning in and, and being with oneself and when you actually hold space for yourself, you can feel another person's space too. And so you can find words that works really well to communicate. I think that's another really great thing with Palladian light work is being able to get the right words. It's almost like channeling the right words to express and explain so that person can go, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Okay, I understand now. And, um, and I always do it with humour and fun. So it's always, you know, a good conversation and a very interesting one. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I, yeah, that's how I work with that. Uh, actually, I have one more question for you, and it's more yeah. like of a practical nature. What would you recommend to people, you know, who are listening to this, you know, who want to take the first step or, you know, say, okay, I want to raise my vibration? what would be like the first thing that they could do? Mm. Yeah, I would say go and have a Palladian healing. <laughs> if you can <laughs> find a Palladian worker, go and have a healing because in that session you can even ask that and get some really good tools. But to raise your vibration every day, like there's something that I have a little mantra every morning and like we are conscious creators every day and thoughts become things. So every morning I'll ask myself, um, what feelings do I want to experience? Because whatever I think about today, I'm going to feel. Mm. So I will often say, well, what is it that I want to experience? Oh, I want to experience like, you know, some days it'll be efficiency. <laughs> other days it'll be like content, relaxed. Um, other days it'll be joy. Um, so I just choose one, a vibration that I can have the experience of. So that's the first step of like holding an intention for yourself each day. But when it comes down to holding energy, I would, I would ask people to just be aware, like, and I'm going to talk again, like in two different terms. So we have an electromagnetic field around our body. We call it an aura. It comes from the system of our chakras. Um, or if you look at it in scientific terms, we have electrical impulses that are moving at frequencies through our body. And through our body, those impulses are linked up with our chakra system. And so with the linking of the two parts that actually come together, it creates a field of energy around us. And so when you're choosing what you want to think about for the day, you're creating all these electrical impulses and the thoughts are going like into your pineal gland 
and it's secreting the hormones. So then you have the experience. So if I sat there and thought loving thoughts, I'm going to experience love. If I sat there and thought about how much I hated this person and what they did to me, I'm going to experience hate. Mm. So the most conscious step is to like start realizing that you have a conscious choice on how you feel. It's just the, the patterns of thoughts that you've been creating. So, and with that energy field, if you then just go into a visual, like, okay, I'm just going to take the thought that let's say that this field even exists and it's right here. Okay. That's pretty cool. Well, let's just pour some gold light over that field and just make it a little bit more solid so I can hold my boundaries. Mm. And I just want this space inside here to be really like supportive and nurturing today, or I want it to be really strong and clear focused, or I want it to be grounded and feeling like I can do anything. Mm. So it's just choosing, you know, what it is that, you know, you, you would like to, you know, feel. Yeah. I love that idea of, you know, being, well, actually it's also about taking responsibility for like your feelings. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Yeah. We're conscious creators. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really such a simple thing. Like when you realize that you are actually responsible for how you're feeling, like um, I do workshops on this stuff and it's just so great because people go, oh, my God, I've got more control than what I thought. Mm. And, and look, with death and grief and um, breakups and, all, and illness, like there are, you know, times of grieving. You can't just jump from grief to happiness, but you can have little moments of joy or coming up that scale. You can have little moments of relief if that's what you want. You know, I just want relief today. I want to have a moment of relief. I want to have an hour of relief, you know, today. That's what I'm going to put my intention out there for. So, yeah, yeah, it's a really good tool. So <laughs> we recommend everyone to start the day with setting the atten- intention of how they want to feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. We're Your all- thoughts become yeah. things. We're all conscious creators. I love that. I love that term. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for this conversation, Mish. If, yeah, you're welcome. If people want to get in touch with you or want to know more about you, where can they find information or how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, so I have a website you can go to. It's um, www.evolveas1.com or .au. I've got the two websites there. I'm international, so I work all over the place. Um, yeah, so and my number is there too. So all my details are on the website. So please go and have a look. I do have a Facebook page as well that you can see where I'm having my workshops or up and coming Palladian teachings. Um, so I've got a couple of courses coming up actually in the new year that you might be interested in. Um, and yeah, so my details. So www.evolve as one dot com dot au or dot com all right thank, thank you, you so Inga. much Mish. oh it was an absolute pleasure your energy is divine it's so beautiful to like to see you face to face yeah so thank you namaste namaste Mish Morsky, for this beautiful interview and thank you for listening to this episode of sounds of the dolphin star temple My takeaway from this wonderful conversation is we are all conscious creators. And I hope you will take that with you in your personal life and to put it to good use so you can also be a conscious creator. So again, if you'd like to know more about Mish Morsky and her work, you can go to evolveasone.com. Evolveasone.com. Or if you'd like to know more about Pleiadian light work, the works of Amora Quinyan or the Dolphin Star Temple Mystery School, you can find us at dolphinstartemple.org. Dolphinstartemple.org. Or alternatively, you can go to our Facebook page and you can find us under Dolphin Star Temple. That was it for this episode of Sounds of the Dolphin Star Temple. Hope to catch you next time.